Howdy ho everybody and welcome to today's adventure. For today, I'm in New York City visiting the Statue of Liberty and trying some of the snacks. If you like this content, please comment below, tell me if you've been to the Statue of Liberty in New York City, and hit the like and subscribe button. Now let's get started on today's patriotic adventure. So first we're starting out in New York City and Times Square. We're then going to Lower Manhattan to see the Statue of Liberty, and it's best to order your tickets online. So for general admission to the island and ferrying over, it's $31.50. If you want to go into the stone pedestal, it's another $31.80 and you have to register. If you want to reserve a crown ticket to go into the Statue of Liberty, it's another $31.80 on top of that, and you have to select a time to go in. It's also important to note that these inside tickets usually get sold out months ahead of time, so you need to pick out a day ahead of time and reserve your tickets, otherwise you might not get in. Now let's get on the ferry. Okay, you're in my way. Keep moving. Go on now. Ah, It was nice to see that there was a snack bar right in the middle of the ferry. Looking at the snacks, they have hot dogs, sausage, chicken taquitas, muffins, cinnamon rolls, cotton candies, chips, ice cream, fruit, different types of drinks, water, iced tea, coffee. There were even souvenirs for the Statue of Liberty, which you can buy here as well, in case you didn't buy them when you were there. Magnets, Blaze potato chips, rubber ducks. Hey, if you need a rubber duck, they got it. Candy and some nuts and cinnamon rolls, it looks like. Now, off to the Statue of Liberty. Whee! When you get to the Statue of Liberty, you drive past the front of it. We can take some really nice photos. Pull around the back side of it and enter through a dock. Time to get off. So as you exit the ferry, you come into the side of the Statue of Liberty. Keep moving. Keep moving. And then you enter the island where there's a gift shop, restaurant, and areas to sit. The first area I came across was the Statue of Liberty Museum that goes to the history of the making and processes of the Statue of Liberty. There's a theater with a movie about the history of Statue of Liberty, a small replica of the Statue of Liberty, and the history of why and how it was built. The Statue of Liberty was created by Frédéric Auguste Bartholdi from France, who was a sculptor that wanted to make a colossal statue project. He decided to commemorate the two countries of France and America and their shared democratic ideas and the fact that France and America were friends, and France helped win America's independence from England. Here we see some of the early design concepts for the Statue of Liberty, which is based off of the Roman goddess Libertas, which shows liberty enlightening the world. Here we see the iron armature, which was a very important development. This was a new high-tech technology developed in the 1800s that people wanted to show off. The architect who designed the iron armature for the Statue of Liberty was Alexandre Gustave Eiffel. If that name sounds familiar, he was also the same architect who designed the scaffolding and architecture for the Eiffel Tower for the Paris World's Fair in 1889. The building process was very difficult. They built and enlarged the statue using wooden structures, plastered over top of them, and then pounded the metal over top of that. And this process is called repose. Here 
Here we actually see a video recreation of the repose process. And here we can see an actual wood mold with the copper in it of looks like one of the feet or toes. Here you can see a finished foot replica made of copper using the repose process. And here you can see the rivets that attached itself to the metal frame that's underneath it. This is really fascinating to see how they put it together. These are some early stone pedestal designs from the Statue of Liberty. It's fun to note that when the Statue of Liberty arrived for construction, the pedestal hadn't been built for it yet, as the country hadn't raised enough money. And the statue sat around for several years, they displayed pieces of it, and begged people to raise money to build a platform to put it on. Here we see a 3D schematic of how the Statue of Liberty is actually built. So we see the front with its overlay, repose, and base. And then in the back you can see the iron armature that holds all the pieces together. This section was really interesting. It displays the original torch of the Statue of Liberty that was there until 1984. When they initially built this torch, it was part of the hand, but they didn't think that the light was bright enough, so they eventually cut out pieces of the torch and turned it into a stained glass window and made it a lighthouse. Some flying debris damaged the torch and the arm, and they decided to replace this in 1986 with the gold polished and lighted torch that we see now. Here we see a beautiful example of the repose process where they recreated the actual face of the Statue of Liberty and how it was actually jointed together. And here is a shot of the entire area with the Statue of Liberty in the background. Here we see an interactive board of some of the new immigrants that just entered America and have seen the Statue of Liberty. I then decided to see the Statue of Liberty for myself and later on got some snacks. 
There she is, Lady Liberty, the symbol of America. Some symbols in the Statue of Liberty, her torch represents enlightenment. The seven rays in her crown represent her enlightening the seven continents. The book she's carrying says July 4th, 1776, which is the Declaration of Independence. On her feet are chains, which shows that she is breaking bondage and the chains of slavery. I didn't get my ticket requested in enough time and I wasn't able to go inside this time, but I did walk around it, get some good shots, and later on tried some of the snacks. So please stay tuned for that. I felt a little parched after that, so I decided to see what was in the Statue of Liberty snack booth. So looking at the snacks, we have a whole rack of chips. We have a cheeseburger for $8.27, which I got. The New Yorker, a torch spicy chicken, chicken fingers, a torch pretzel, a fruit smoothie, and some drinks, which I also got. So let's see how these taste. So I found myself a little seat got some water and a mango smoothie, and decided to try their hamburger, which had cheese, lettuce, onions on it. It might have been a tomato, I don't know. And that is my mango smoothie. Let's give this a taste. Um, what's going on here? I don't think you're supposed to be here. Get out of here, go on now. Shoo. Go on. Don't try to eat my hamburger. You and your friend over there. Anyway, let's try this stuff. Mmm. I don't think I like this. It tastes like a cheap high school cafeteria hamburger. The hamburger is dry and flavorless. The cheese tastes like plastic. The onions are too strong. The lettuce is bland. There's no tomato on here. And it kind of just fell apart. When I tried to bite into it. And get out of here. Go on. Take your little friend with you. I don't think I like this. And unless they change the recipe. I probably give this. 2 out of 10 American flags. Now let's try the drink. Mm, looking at this drink. My first issue is it's runny like water. And it wasn't even frozen. Mmm. This isn't very flavorful either. It's not slushy-ish, it's not frozen. It's barely cold. I didn't have enough time to make it or something, but they sold it anyway. I'm gonna give this one out of 10 American flags and unless they make it right, I wouldn't get this. Now let's go back to the Statue of Liberty and some of its history. After that, I went around and looked at the Statue of Liberty to get some more shots. Here you can see lots of immigrants and people from around the world enjoying the day and admiring the statue. There was also beautiful views of New York City, yachts coming by, private ships, and it was just a really nice day. After that I took one last look at the museum and in this exhibit we can see the influence in pop culture of the Statue of Liberty from different types of souvenirs. Here we see a Hanukkah menorah with the Statue of Liberty. The Statue of Liberty plates. We can see a quilt. And these are from all different time periods. Lamps, clocks, toys. Barbie dolls, Legos. Poster design. Sculptures and pop cultural elements. And of course, endless references in film, television, and movies. If you like this review, please check out my other videos of New York City where I try food and adventures. Thank you for watching. Please hit that like and subscribe button. And please comment below as to whether you've been here, tried the food, or been to New York City. Thank you again and have a fun 4th of July, Labor Day, or Memorial Day. Bye-bye.